Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. About eight months ago, the Great River Arts Center in Little Falls called me and they wanted me to do a show of my paintings. And I have been painting abstract paintings, large abstract paintings, mostly for galleries on the East Coast and in Florida. And I had shown some in Little Falls before, some of my work, but I thought that what would really be interesting here in this community would be to do something more local. And so I suggested that I do a hundred portraits of local people. And uh, they thought it, that that would be a good idea. It helps to energize the gallery and gets a lot of people interested. So uh, I wanted to get uh, a wide spectrum of the community, the farmers, doctors, dentists, artists, police, criminals, students, old, young, the works. And so I'm well on my way. You can see what I do, I take pictures. I don't work from people setting because it would, I would never get anything done that way because it's so hard to get someone setting for a few hours and have them set very still and have them here in the middle of the night when I usually paint. So I take pictures and put them up on my screen, crop them, change them around a little bit, put them up on my screen, and then do a sketch. So I get the general composition down very quickly because it's a face with some background and a face of a, with a certain likeness. What I like to do, some of the paintings are, uh, the background is very simple. Like this one is uh, my mother, Lorraine Sharon, and my niece, her granddaughter, Cassidy Hintz. And that's sort of, I didn't want any energy in that other than that very calm, sort of mysterious look they have going there. Others, I put a lot of, I start, I mix the paint right on the mahogany panel and it's all full of paint and I edit it out, but on some of them I like to keep, uh, keep a little bit of that color and energy going on. And uh, yeah, they're all local. My nephew, this is someone who works for me, uh, constructing metal sculptures, high school friend of mine grocery store owner, son of uh, a very good friend of mine. So everyone, every picture has a story. I want to get a story with each one. It's people who I run into pretty much at random. And uh, I have my camera with me, so if almost everybody is willing to be in the show. And I always guarantee them that they're not going to like their portrait, but that it's going to be a very good painting. In a few years, they will like it, but no, you know, nobody ever likes their... They look at it as their likeness rather than as a painting. I draw it onto the mahogany panel, a very simple line drawing, and uh, then I work from, uh, from the line drawing. I have a... English friend here, Hebe Joy, who I think is so beautiful. She spends a lot of time here. Uh, and she, I don't know, I think she looks like the Mona Lisa. But I want to get her this very pale, fair skin along with the reddish hair and her blue eyes. Those are very important parts of her character. I like to use different tools when I'm painting. Now I now have these paint pens, but I also use palette knife, I use a stick sometimes, and, and paint brushes. But to get her hair, which is really frizzy, and uh, I do the, I draw it by putting together a few pencils, a few of these pencils together, and I know that it's going to be really messy.
and then I will go over this, but this will, uh, this will give some nice color under, underneath. It always sort of peeks, peeks through. I, want, I like the paintings to have some texture, so when you feel them, they might be a little bit rough. So people are tempted to touch them. I like that. It's good to be sort of sloppy because if I'm not sloppy, I can't find where I'm going. I was always interested in art. My earliest memories are memories of creating and coloring and scribbling. And when I turned 18, I wanted to get out of here as fast as I could. So I went to school in Mexico and studied art and uh, archaeology and anthropology in Mexico City. And I love that. Then I came back to Minnesota for a little while and then moved to, um, to Boston, studied with some people at MIT at the Advanced Visual Studies Department. I went to New York. I moved to New York in 1976 and within four years I had a show at a nice gallery downtown and I've been showing in New York almost every year since, which is uh, a real godsend because uh, that is where the art buyers go. When you're doing a, a portrait, you know what you're after. You're after a likeness, and then you can play around with it a little bit. But when you do an abstract painting, you have to find it and recognize when you have it, and it can be really uh, frustrating. But then when you get it, it's very rewarding. You see, this is her sort of milky white. Now, I, I go over this. This will be gone over a number of times. I'm using acrylic paint, which is something that I don't normally do. You have to find the line, and I have to, uh, you know, that's when it comes in handy to have a picture because she has this line going down, you know, that I've totally wiped out, like, like this line. And this up here is a little bit darker. I made it look sort of bruised. That's why you have to go over it because this color is sort of an ugly color. With the acrylic, it's fairly forgiving. This one is this far done, which is a sketch. And uh, so I leave this, I put this aside until it dries and then rework it, uh, you know, pull it out, clean it up, add details. But this is the underneath, so now I know where it's going and what I can do with it. Thing. First, I had to make, the first decision that I make is like putting the seed in the ground. And the first decision was to use those four colored paint tubes with the hair. And so that determined, you know, once you get the hair in, then you have to follow. I always follow whatever is there, try to see what is there, and then work with it. Sometimes it doesn't work, and I have to start from scratch. But this is going to work. I will redo the eyes, redo the skin. The hair is almost there. The background might be white or might leave it black. I always start with, uh, with the black. In the background, too, sometimes I like to have it reflect the energy of the person. The character comes out. You know, especially if I know the people, and I think even if I don't know the people, if I get a good, I usually take 15 pictures and work from them, so I, I don't have only, I'm not working from just one picture. You know, they probably take a total of 
couple hours, something like that. But then I then they sit for a while, and then I look at them, and maybe they're not done, so I have to go over them. Usually that's what happens. So I will do something. I'll sketch it in, let it dry, and that's the first step. Then I do the next step, which is editing out what it what doesn't belong there, and redefining the shapes a little bit so they won't be uh, so confusing, like her neck, that whole thing there is very confusing, so I will uh, change that and uh, pretty much rework the whole thing and build up more paint. Let it dry again and uh, then do the final touch-up. So usually it takes, you know, three three dries. You paint three times and then dry it three times and then you hope that it's done. If it isn't, you just keep uh, working. I started this project um, a year ago and it's not something I've ever done before, but it's something that I will do again. Um, I had never done, well, I've done a lot of drawings and some portraits, but that's not what I do. I do uh, other things, other paintings. But something that I found very fascinating, and I was wondering about it when I started, when you do not one or five or six of something, but you do a hundred of pretty much the same, you know, a face with two eyes, nose and mouth, and the same scale, it, uh, it evolves and it changes as you go along. Every painting, you know, it's something is new or there's something that's incorporated from the past that's new and you pick up new things. Everyone here knows other people in this group. Some of them know all of everybody here. It's tricky sometimes to know when something is finished, and, uh, but it's important to know when it's finished because if you don't, you go on forever, right? <laughs> when I stand back and look at these, I can't really believe that I did so many in such a short time because I always feel like I'm a little slothful and I never get anything done. But really I'm a, a workaholic so I feel like I always need to do more. But when I stand back and look at this work, I think I did it quite a bit in the, in the last year. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org.